Let's take a look at the the June releasing New Balance Fuel Cell Lorado $225 represents New Balance's pinnacle expression of comfort, durability, and quality construction in a running shoe. It weighs 11.78 ounces uh, or 334 grams in a US 9 more or less. Uh, it incorporates many of the very latest technologies we see in New Balance's high-end racing shoes. We have the same fuel cell foam that's autoclaved and super light and low density um, as in the RC Elite 2 and Rebel V2. Uh, we have a carbon plate and we have a truly spectacular upper. So where does this idea come from? Well, back in the 1980s, early 1980s, New Balance created the 990 which had the same concept, deluxe materials, state-of-the-art, focused on comfort. And we're only on uh, version 5 of the, uh, of the 990, many years later, almost 40 years later. Time to reimagine the concept and bring it into the 21st century with the Lorado. The level of detail in the upper is pretty amazing. We have a high knit collars. Then below that, we have a mesh uh, that's highly, highly textured, very zonal in its support. Even the N has an, an overlay that uh, gives it that color, but also a bit more support. The laces are uh, have little reflective dots, and you can see those lace loops, which also are reflective. And here's a night shot of the shoe. Uh, to provide stability for that soft, soft fuel cell foam, we have a TPU heel clip, and below that we have the carbon plate poking out. So the whole system is very soft, very stable, and with a very nice kind of very mellow rocker effect. Um, the midsole is two-toned, as you can see here, to kind of reduce the overall profile. We have a stack height of... Uh, 37 at the heel, 27 at the forefoot as measured uh, by our Derek Lee to the IAIF standards. So we had uh, testers literally all over the world. Here's Derek in Singapore. We have Ivan in Copenhagen. Uh, and we have folks in the U.S. as well. So you're going to get a wide perspective from uh, all kinds of differing runners on this shoe in our full multi-tester written review. But here's my initial take on the Lorado, reflecting some of the thoughts of our testers. Okay, let's talk about the fit of the Lorado. So you can see I'm wearing them with my uh, run commute pants from Tracksmith, a big time favorite. So you can see how they dress up. But anyway, I'm a half size up from my normal eight and a half at a nine here and i would go true to size uh, the heel hold is tremendous a bit loose at my half size up uh, the toe box has plenty of room the structure is provided really entirely by the mesh uh, i find the mesh a little kind of trail shoey and feel a little dense um, uh, up front very luxurious fitting at midfoot Lots of support from, there's a gusset tongue. Tongue stayed pretty uh, stable and in the right place. Uh, lace up, you can see, it doesn't take much to keep them nicely laced. Fit was good, if a bit big. So no question, true to size, even for moderately large, wide feet. Okay, the ride here, the Lorado. So it is a super pleasant, deluxe, deluxe ride. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is incredible heel stability. We've got a clip here, and that sits over our super bouncy fuel cell foam. And below that, we have tons and tons of rubber. So you have a very bouncy heel. The sensation is of stability right here, but then we don't have too much or too overdone uh, medial support. So there's plenty, plenty, but both neutral and um, pronating kind of runners should be just fine. You'll also notice how high the collars are. They're really very high. So your foot is super well held at the rear, up higher, uh, but it's not an overly snug kind of fit. A few of our tests are reporting some wear of the, the fabric, this very soft, luxurious fabric on the um, Achilles uh, collar. We've told New Balance about that. Another thing here, tons and tons of reflectivity running all the way through all the way around uh, so the sensation when you're running is of a a nice bounce stable bounce off the heel and then you get forward and start to engage our 
carbon plate which is sandwiched in here um, but this is not an aggressive harsh carbon feel as you might find in in a race shoe uh, in fact uh, uh, new balance's rc elite their premier racer also doesn't have a super aggressive feel to its rocker it's kind of a smooth long rocker here it is even more subtle if you if you didn't tell me there was a um, a carbon plate i probably wouldn't know but if you run in a carbon plated shoe you might suspect it because you do feel that impulse uh, long this long impulse and then a smooth toe off even at very slow paces now how does new balance uh, kind of conquer the harshness the, the typical harshness of a carbon plate well of course we've got our very soft low density fuel cell foam but also we have this very extensive rubber coverage actually it feels to me the black in front is a touch softer um, than this middle gray piece and that middle gray piece I think in addition to get undoubtedly giving you tons and tons of um, wear surface for many many miles also provides kind of a, a softer element in the sandwich isolating the plate which is above uh, from the ground a bit more so there's a very nice feeling here um, okay so yeah this is just a very premium kind of construction look at the little loops uh, we asked uh, New Balance about those lace loops and there is much they said about how they kind of feel and look as function well they look pretty snazzy um, the upper is you can see kind of a of closed mesh uh, they've been warm in the winter all of our testers agree warm in the winter probably not that breathable I wish this was a little more pliable as you go further to the rear you have um, a very intricate layering if you will of the different mesh and then you have kind of a knit construction towards the rear above more uh, mesh very elaborate the tongue is super comfortable very just a light amount of padding it'd be a bit hard to see but there is a gusset but unlike any other shoe i can think of the gusset is nicely finished off in the sense that um, it's attached to the shoe uh, fully attached to the shoe so the feeling on the foot is of just very, very secure, very kind of, I won't call it soft, but very luxurious. Uh, the collars you can see have this very, very soft kind of mesh, maybe not as durable as we'd like to see. Uh, you can see the elaborate construction here. So what is this shoe for? Well, as soon as I kind of heard of it, as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought this is the 21st century to the famous 990, which I think was the first, very first shoe to come in over $100. And at 225, uh, this is not an inexpensive shoe, that's for sure. But it is definitely a premium shoe. I would call it sort of the shoe of presidents, maybe, uh, as the 990 has been, because New Balance has often given them to U.S. presidents, and some of them have actually run in them or walked in them. Um, so uh, it's top to bottom premium premium but it doesn't despite its weight which uh, is not you know not the lightest here at uh, remind myself um, at 11.78 ounces or 334 grams in a US 9 9.98 ounces uh, 283 in a women's 8 so this is not a light shoe however it is a almost a full ounce lighter than say for example the ultra boost 21 um, it's a little heavier than say the mizuno sky wave, wave sky 4 yes it's heavier than the um, nike uh, invincible zoom x invincible uh, which also of, of the ones i mentioned here has a very springy bouncy ride but isn't nearly as stable um, and i don't think uh, that it'll last nearly as long in terms of the outsole as what we have here. That, that shoe is 180. If you're a New Balance fan and you want something a little a lighter but with a, uh, a bouncy energetic ride, doesn't come quite uh, as close to the kind of silky, springy, carbon-plated feel here, the 
fresh foam more v3 we have a review of that is a great alternative it is yet more cushioned it's fresh foam not the fuel cell not the autoclave fuel cell um, fuel cell foam we have here but it and there's no plate uh, but it has an equally kind of enjoyable bouncy soft ride but a little bit less controlled a little bit less uh, kind of um, all premium all all forgiving is what we have here all stable too so uh, how will I use this shoe well uh, let's not let's talk about some other than running it sure dresses up well you could probably go just about anywhere in it all of our testers report it's a fantastic walking shoe too but it makes a great easy day shoe this is the shoe you want to take out when you don't have any agenda whatsoever you're out for an easy cruise so this is cruising par excellence in a lot of stable luxury but it doesn't leave kind of the ride behind because you've got that springy 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 fuel cell x uh, fuel cell you've got the carbon plate uh, New, New Balance actually in their marketing says about the shoe and, that, and um, that it's premium luxury, crazy cushioning, unexpected energy return. And I would say that that is exactly what you feel here. Um, it, it's quite something. And they also say, don't work too hard. You don't have to work too hard, run hard every day. And not every day is race day. So that's also well described. My run today was about seven miles, nice easy pace. I've got a bit of a sciatica thing going on and it was the perfect shoe for it. I felt that it handled uh, slow paces as opposed to super slow paces a little better. Once I got off the heel, uh, it rolls along very, very smoothly. So this is the Deluxe Premium new option from New Balance, the Lorado. It goes on sale in June, $225. It is well worth your consideration, and we thank you for watching Road Trail Run, and we hope you'll subscribe to our channel. We'll also have a full multi-tester review uh, on our site, um, roadtrailrun.com, and we also have Instagram at Road Trail Run, where we post early views of shoes we have in testing.